Get free premium access to all of my Skillshare courses on investment banking cover letters, divisions and CVs by clicking the link in the video description below. For those of you wondering, I did lots of internships across investment banks and after graduating, I spent over three years working at an investment bank called Goldman Sachs. To most people in the industry, Goldman Sachs is the pinnacle of high finance. But to the general public, Goldman Sachs is known as the corrupt government controlling vampire squid that created, took advantage of and got bailed out of the 2008 global financial crisis. And before you ask, don't worry, I'm no longer there. That's a bit of background on me. Now let's get back to the video. What is going on people? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reacting to Industry Episode 3. I actually caught up with my Harla Herald aka Harper Stern, so the main character of the show. Caught up with her on Zoom a few days ago, so keep an eye out on the channel because I'll be releasing the interview in about a week or two. Anyways, without any further ado, let's see what Episode 3 has in store for us. I still keep getting that feeling whenever I wake up like, I don't know, like I can't believe that I'm here. <laughs> That's a common feeling when you break into one of the most prestigious banks in the world and you know you come from you know a normal background you're like wow I can't believe I'm here but truth be told novelty wears off as with all things like initially you're like wow it's amazing but as time goes on it becomes just like any other places the people around everyone is just normal and it's like that wow factor wears off after a while. Eric, what do you want me on? Quick update, so Gus used to be in the investment banking division, that kind of got restructured, there was probably no headcount and so now he's on the sales and trading floor. Mate, are you serious with this price? Do you know the difference between racing green and studio green? Buddy, you are in my personal space. <laughs> I hate it when people come right in front of your face, like, give some space man, jeez. What did you study? Literary manuals. The hell is that? Classics. Classics, big man. How the fuck did you end up in a bank? <laughs> Only in England. <laughs> He's laughing. I told Clement to look after you. It's a bit awkward if you saw episode, I think it was two. This guy went in on her, like he completely just flipped at her over a graduate dinner so the relationship is a bit awkward now um but let's see she's trying to make amends yeah exercise even though it wasn't her fault it was unfair of me to put that pressure on you and you're not ready the truth is nobody's gonna take your ideas seriously for a few years so just nail the small stuff yeah he's got a point nail the small stuff as an intern as a graduate the foundations of anything of very very important you want to smash the small stuff the base the foundation you want to get all of that stuff right do it to a high standard high level and then do the more interesting more ambitious tasks only when you nail the small stuff people will trust you and they will start giving you more and more work you don't want to run before you can walk okay. also truth is going to client meetings yeah it looks great all of that but most of this work is it's pretty dry like you're on a excel spreadsheet or a powerpoint or reading stuff it's, work is work if you're an intern or a graduate and you're expecting to go into this industry or any industry and be i don't know excited and fun every minute of the day reality is going to hit you hard work is work it can be quite mundane and boring but obviously when you go to graduate fairs and you know when companies are pitching themselves to you they never tell you that that's why i'm here i'm going to tell you that how did you two find each other uh, university. Oxford. No, I mean social circles. How does an old Etonian end up pals with a lad from the pit? So, Gus went to Eton, private school. Uh, I think it's like £30,000 a year, secondary school, every year. Um, and Rob didn't go to Eton, came from an underprivileged background. They both got to Oxford, but obviously they come from different socio-economic backgrounds working class background upper class or middle class background so it's interesting to see how things will play out because now Gus has moved from IBD into a sales team which is Rob's team how do you expect to sell financial products if you sound like a miner wow okay. wow wow this is a thing and it's very uh, common but people won't say it I'll link an article below that the Guardian did on polish so most people or students or graduates that go to 
a private school compared to state school kids. What employees and professionals in these industries have said, they oftentimes select these uh, private educated students because they are more polished candidates. They know how to hold conversations, they sound more professional, they speak the Queen's English, whatever it might be. You'll see from the dialogue, Gus just clicks, he's more relatable, he connects with the senior professional compared to Rob because he, he doesn't relate to them, he doesn't connect on that level, he hasn't had that similar private school educational background. And this, you see this a lot and it can be a disadvantage to you. However, the industry, a lot of firms are trying to tackle this because it's important to have diversity, not just of race and gender and sexual preference, but of socio-economic status as well. 16th of September, 1992, Black Wednesday, when we left the ERM. So you can immediately see already, those who are clicking, they're bonding more, and Rob feels like a bit of an outsider. This guy Usman actually runs money. Why, what kind of comment is that? You look at someone's photo and say, this person actually runs money. This guy, man, snob, man, arrogant, thinks he's too much. I'll pick him an intro. What's their mandate? How do you not know that? Oh, a bit patronising, but he should know the mandate details. If you're an intern, analyst, graduate, whatever it is, you should know key clients, all the details, what products they're invested in, how much money they've got, how much money you're managing for them, investing with them, whatever it is, know as much detail as you can because that information will be required at random points in the day. Seniors might ask for it and it's always good to just be aware of that type of uh, insight. I need a favour. So, uh, Aubrey from Allerton is coming in tomorrow and I need a pack put together. Just boring data entry, I'm afraid. How often they've been trading, what volume, which asset class needs to... As a junior, you're going to be doing a lot of this type of stuff, putting together packs on clients ahead of meetings. <clears throat> so you're basically getting your senior prepared for that meeting. All of the information on the client for the past six months, three years, five years, whatever it is what products they're invested in, how much money they have, everything you need to know about a client so your senior is prepared ahead of a meeting. To go back the last 30 years, I, I know it's not the sexiest of work, you'd be getting me out of a home. Can we can meet with Aubrey together. That's nice. Great. Yeah, just send over the info and I'll get right on it. It's great, thank you, appreciate you. Harper, what's the UCA on the back? Been that long? Getting there? <laughs> Isn't that how far you go? Oh, she ain't putting the work in. So always manage expectations, super important. If someone gives you a piece of work to do, ask them when do you need it by and get it at least a day or a few hours before the deadline. Managing expectations is super important because you're going to have 10 different people telling you to do 10 different things. If you can't prioritise and manage that, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just working on this pitch for Eric. But I think it could be commercial for the desk. Okay, but I need to review it before the meeting tomorrow. Can you get it to me before the end of the day? If you can't, just say. I mean, we'll, we'll work it out. Yeah, 100%. Great. You want to under-promise and over-deliver. You don't want to over-promise and under-deliver. Thank you. But don't kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that one before. <laughs> You're up. Oh. Oh. So your trade idea? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Um, this all you've done? Oh no. I didn't know that you were expecting it to finish. I expect right? you to have expectations of yourself. The last thing, like, yes, you should tell people that you're working on so many different things, but don't do it when it's when the work is due, or don't do it too late. Sooner is better than later. Okay, here, here's how it's gonna go. You're gonna pitch me this again in the morning meeting. And it's going to be the version I asked for. Ooh. I like Eric. He puts a lot of pressure on Harper, but it's because he knows she's ambitious and hardworking and he's constantly putting her out of her comfort zone because he knows that's where people grow and develop. And so it might seem she might be pissed off at him, but it's good for her development. And also he doesn't want her to get complacent. Are you only reading that now? <laughs> oh no. I'm already in a dialogue with Usman. I'm working on a pitch with Theo. Another display of that competitive nature coming through. One of them is already in dialogue with the client, while the other is just reading the notes and 
content now. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure and competitiveness between them. I've got a mic on the way because there's some glitching going on, not sure why, but I want to apologise in advance. Sorry about that. Um. Aubrey's been inactive for too long. Darius, she's got her, she's got her own way of doing things. It's time wasted. I don't want to step on her toes. Her toes are the last thing you'd be thinking about. Just tell me what the appetite's like. I'll think about putting it in front of my guys. Okay. He's giving her a lot of responsibility. A lot of you, if you're analysts or interns. It depends on the team that you join, your manager. Some of them will just give you boring work, basic stuff. Some of them will take you under their wing and get you into meetings and get you, you know, doing real work. And so Harp is lucky that she found a manager like that. However, oftentimes by doing so, you feel like you're stepping on other people's toes because there's other people more senior to you who aren't getting that respect or mentorship from Eric. And so there's a bit of internal politics there. I just really think that with a minor spin, this could be interesting for us. Harper said last night that Dara is putting her into a meeting with Aubrey Lewis from Alice this afternoon. Aubrey's in the middle of it. <laughs> oh no. There's a client called Aubrey. Now, these guys on the FX desk probably service that client, and then the cross product sales team also are servicing that client. And so this goes back to what I mentioned in the previous video. You can have one company, this investment bank, and on the trading floor, different teams who serve one client. Now they're gonna be competing with each other for business from that client. And so it goes back to internal politics, competitive dynamics, all of that stuff. And so now you're gonna see, he's gonna probably try and get himself or the grad in that meeting so they can see what's being discussed. Um, and it's good to have presence from your team in a meeting with a client to potentially explore future opportunities. We're not discussing FX business. All right, well, well, I still think we should be a bit more coordinated. Aubrey does most of his business on his desk. Okay, fine, but Yas Yasmin has Man formulated clicked. an interest in play on the housing market, and I would like her in there to gauge the temperature. <laughs> now you see the competitiveness between the juniors. Oh my God. I don't want grads pitching in my meeting. Not pitching, no, just observing. Okay, sure. Fine. Meetings at three. Much appreciated. You sit in. You keep quiet. And do every single thing you say. <laughs> I don't f***ing believe that one. You might have been an air pack. I can't see me as a f***ing post. So Eric's told Harper to go in there and pitch this idea. But, ah, oh, this is going to be awkward. I would advise against. It's not the Pierpoint House view. Isn't there merit? The house view is what most people in the firm or the firm itself are kind of putting out there into the industry. Um, but Harper's pitching something that goes against the house view. And at least exploring some kind of insurance? Sometimes, yes. But Open I've been speed. working on a hedge on the housing market that I... <clears throat> oh, this is yes. awkward. Nothing, n nothing, sorry. I, I just thought Dario would prefer to lead on this one. Oh my days, this okay. is awkward. This is a CPS meeting, and you're here to observe, so... Ladies, you know I'm all ears for new ideas, but let's not discuss them on Aubrey's time. Sometimes, if you're an intern graduate, know your place. Like, this is this just looks a mess. It's embarrassing. You shouldn't be acting like this in front of a client. It's so uncoordinated, and it just dampens the reputation of the firm. Respectfully, Eric, I brought her into the meeting. Aubrey's been my client for three years, I know his needs. With what he pays, his needs are subordinate to mine. Again, respectfully, I have to disagree. Harper had the balls to work on something that was cogent and commercial enough to be put in front of clients. We reward her. Fair point. A bit old school, but fair. Get free premium access to all of my Skillshare courses on investment banking cover letters, divisions, and CVs by clicking the link in the video description below. And what the f are you doing taking FX in there with you? She's a grad, Drama. Eric. It was, it was a favor. Can you tell me the yield you get out of that account versus the hours you put in? Because this isn't a f social club. You're going to spend time stroking these clueless, f chinless country club. Henry's. Henry's. High earners, not rich yet. What is our desk's budget 
for the year. How much money they need to make. No one knows. How does nobody know that number? I go to bed with that number. <laughs> we owe our clients nothing. We have no fiduciary responsibility. Fiduciary responsibility is what you would have if you're in private banking or asset management. You are responsible for responsibly managing the client's money. Whereas on the sales and trading floor, you're just advising the clients, but you don't have a fiduciary responsibility. We're advisors. We are facilitators, first and foremost. We can't facilitate nothing. <laughs> it's not like people pay for research. No, that's exactly what you pay for. <laughs> not for me, thank you. Are you sure we can't tempt you? Ah, oh, mate. I don't drink. If you enjoyed that, do consider giving this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. My next video is coming out on Tuesday and if you want me to do a reaction video for episode 4, let me know in the comments below. Thank you.